Hi everybody, it's Christina Mascari from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can update an old piece of furniture from your house. I'm gonna be using a affordable sprayer as well as an all-in-one paint that is a primer, paint, and sealer all-in-one so you can get this makeover done quickly. So if you wanna see this beginner-friendly makeover, just keep watching. This is the chest of drawers I'm gonna be working on today. This is my neighbor's and she was originally gonna donate it to me, but then they decided they wanted to keep it for their son's a big boy room. They don't have plans for it yet, so we're gonna keep it really neutral so it'll fit in the space. We ended picking up a Dixie Belle Silk and Oyster. It's a beautiful white with just a little bit of a gray undertone. Today's video is sponsored by Dixie Belle Paint Company, so stick around to the end of the video for a chance to win $100 to their website. I'm going to keep the original hardware on this piece because it's in good shape, it fits the piece well, and it's a funky size, and it's going to save us money. So all around, good idea to save the hardware on this one. I am going to remove these keyholes though, just to give it a little bit more of a modern look. My goal is to make this makeover very beginner friendly for you. There's not a lot of steps because I'm using that all in one silk paint, but the first thing you always have to do when you are making over a piece is clean it really well. I'm using Dixie Belle White Lightning mixed up in a spray bottle and just scrubbing all that dirt and grime away. Rinsing is just as important as cleaning, so you wanna take some clean water and get rid of all that soap residue. This dresser is in really good shape. I only had to repair the holes from the keyholes that I removed. I'm sanding the surface a little bit to prep it and then I'm adding some Dixie mud to repair the holes. I'm gonna be spraying today, so I'm setting up my Wagner pop-up tent where I will do my spraying. Once my Dixie mud is dry, I'm gonna come in with a very fine rad pad and I'm just smoothing out that area. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to scuff sand my entire piece. As you can see, this is just a light sanding. I'm not stripping back the finish. This is an extra prep step that you need to do if you're using that silk all in one paint. It's really gonna help it adhere well. Once I'm finished scuff sanding, I'm just gonna remove all that dust with a tack cloth and you can also wipe it back with a damp towel. Since this dresser is nice and flat, I am not going to be removing the drawers to spray, so I'm just taping off an area inside to protect it from any overspray. When I'm spraying a tall piece like this, I prefer to lay it on its back. I think it's easier to get into every nook and cranny this way. I'm also propping it up on some painter's pyramid so that my piece doesn't stick to the ground. I'm going to be spraying with the Home Right Finish Max Super today. This is a very affordable sprayer and it is very popular in the DIY community. And if you didn't know, Home Right is actually owned by Wagner, which you have seen a lot on my channel. I absolutely love spraying silk because it's all in one. It's just a one step paint. It's really thin, so it sprays really beautifully. And I think it's an easy paint to spray for a beginner. To start off, I'm just stirring and then I'm going to strain my paint to make sure there's no little bits in there that are gonna get stuck in the gun. And this paint, you can water down one ounce to 16 ounces of paint. So I am adding that just to thin it out just a little bit more. This sprayer comes with multiple tips. I'm gonna be using the green one that is for fine finishes and furniture. And I've got my intake tube pointed forward because most of my spraying I'm gonna do is gonna be in a downward motion. The only adjustments you can make on this one is your flow level with this plus and minus button. To start out, I'm gonna have it turned all the way down and I'm gonna work my way up and see what works best for me. Testing out your sprayer is key. Even if you have used that sprayer 500 times, I always test it out on a board to make sure I have my flow exactly where I want it. The sprayer is really light and easy to handle. You will need an extension cord because the cord it comes with is really short. If you want any tips on spraying for a beginner, I have a great video on that and I will link that above and down in the description box. I was really impressed with the power and the ease of using this thing for the price point. It does have a little bit more overspray than I'm used to with my other Wagner sprayers that I've worked with, but don't be freaked out about that. As you're overlapping your paint, it's really going to smooth it out and as it dries, it will level out a little bit. So if you see those splatters and stuff, you can see that on the side of my piece. It all turned out fine, so don't panic about that. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna zoom you in and give you a little bit more real-time spraying here. I think one of the most important things to remember when you're spraying is to start off your piece and stop off your piece. That's gonna give you less splatter. And you need to do a lot of overlapping. As you can see, I'm basically overlapping by like 50%. You will see that spattering and stuff at the bottom. Again, don't let that freak you out because it's just gonna smooth as you're going back over it. 12 inches is a really good distance to be from your piece. It's hard to maintain that consistency, but try to stay 12 inches from your piece and try not breaking your wrist because that'll make your finish uneven. As I mentioned, Silk is one of my favorite paints to spray because it's primer, paint, sealer, all in one. And this has really good coverage when you spray it. This is such a light color, and typically I probably would have to do three coats if I was brushing this on, but with a sprayer, I only ended up doing two. For the sides, I'm gonna switch my nozzle into vertical mode, so this will just be pointing up and down as I spray this way. Again, I wanted to show you an up close view of spraying in real time. I let this dry for about two hours and then I came in and buffed any imperfections with a super fine rad pad. And then I'm just dusting off the whole thing. There were lots of grass clippings on here because it was lawn mowing day in my neighborhood. Two coats was enough coverage for this piece. I ended up using 24 ounces, which is a can and a half of silk. Okay, the part that everybody dreads. Now it's time to clean the gun. It actually is not that hard. And if you compare it to brushing, cleaning brushes, I think it's almost the same amount of time. So I'm just removing my can and uh, unplugging it and squeezing back that trigger to remove any paint that's still in the gun portion. And then I'm pouring my remaining paint back into my canister. Then I'm gonna add some hot soapy water to my canister since I'm using a water-based paint. I'm going to plug my gun back in and spray this through for a few seconds. Then I'm gonna bring everything back inside and anything that I can detach, like the canister and the nozzle and the intake tube, I'm gonna clean those with some soapy water and that comes with a really handy to use brush so you can get in those hard to reach areas. It also comes with this little wrench so that I can remove my green tip and clean inside of there. And in my opinion, the hardest part is cleaning this little canister and cleaning inside the needle as well. You cannot submerge this in water because it is attached to the motor. My other sprayers, you can remove that unit completely. So I do like that better about some of the other sprayers that I've tried, but it wasn't that hard. Then you just set everything up to dry. So I am going to clean up my paper and tear down my tent and make some final touches to my piece. I find it much easier to touch up the sides of the drawer with a sponge brush like this than taking out the drawers and completely having to tape them off. So you do what works best for you, but this is usually the way that I go. I let everything dry overnight and like I said, I am going to use the original hardware and I thought I was maybe gonna make it black, but it looks so good with this light. It makes the hardware look darker and it's just really sophisticated and it fits the piece. So save some time and money there by not having to change the hardware. So this was a super quick makeover that only took me two days. A sprayer saves you so much time, you guys. You should definitely try it out. Just to remind you, here's what I started off with before and here it is after. Such a simple makeover, but what a big impact. And because this is a nice neutral piece, no matter what my friends decide doing in their son's room, it's going to fit in perfectly. If you want a chance to win that $100 gift card to Dixie Bell's website, make sure you're subscribed here. Go subscribe to Dixie Bell's channel and let me know down in the comments if you're brave enough to try to spray silk. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will be back next week with another furniture makeover. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.